Hello there, my name is Peter Graham. Um, I'm demonstrating today the process of uh, traditional corking and the, the first part of that process is to spin oakum. You grab, you, what you do is you roll it on your leg, easing it out like that, spin, ease it out, spin. The reason I like to do this is because the varying size of seams means you want different thicknesses of oakum. Some, some seams are really small, so you want really, really thin. And other seams, you can leave it just quite thick, like that. So you just roll it like that. So the reasons uh, oakum is widely used on traditional craft is because of the sort of uh, Stockholm tar properties of the oakum, which makes it very resistant to rotting. As to uh, cotton, which is, um, as, as it says, just plain cotton, um, which you mainly use, in my opinion, on new yachts, when the seams are all a consistent width. But on traditional craft, the seams vary so much that oakum is quite adaptable, and you'll see when I start caulking the boat why that is. The most important thing for a caulker is a good set of caulking irons. Um, the reason to be quite fussy about the quality of them is, the, is because you imagine, if you imagine you're caulking a 60 foot yacht, um, it's quite important to have a, a nice feeling set of caulking irons. And also the, the varying widths of the irons, um, if you can see there, they're all sorts of widths, little thin ones and thick ones. Even you could even go as far as getting a like a double crease one, which is uh, I can't find that. Um, so that's the, the size of the head and the feel of it, the iron stuff like that. And also very very traditional tool is a, a corking a corking mallet. This is quite personal to the individual. Some people prefer. Uh, quite a long one or short ones, um, and the balance is quite crucial. The way the way you use it, it's not it's not to do with how much force you put behind the mallet. It's the the weight of the mallet itself. So you just swing it in that motion. I'll now um, do some actual corking, and uh, you'll see how it all works. Some of the features of the mallet are quite distinctive. Uh, the most distinctive thing about this mallet, the mallet you'll see, is a, a slot in the actual head. This slot is actually there for a, a quite a good reason. If you didn't have that slot, it would ring quite loud in your ears, and especially the person next to you, uh, it would become quite irritating. So they actually put a slot in there which stops that. Also, the metal ferrules on the end give the mallet a lot more lifespan, it stops the ends from splitting. Important because it's um, the length of it means the weight is down the length of the body of the mallet so it's quite a light item to use um, but there's when you swing it it can create quite a lot of force whilst putting the uh, oakum in the seam and if you imagine you're doing a, a hundred foot boat Swinging a heavy mallet all day would be quite hard on the arms. So this has evolved over hundreds of years, probably even old, longer than that. And it's a joy to use, a real traditional shipwright's tool. You can see that when I say the crease in the iron, it's actually like a, a V in the actual end of the iron. And they vary in widths, a little thin one, thicker one, and then if the, if the seam gets very big, you go to a, a bigger one which is like a double crease. And the reason they're like this is, is I, I call it like the, the term I call when I took, tell students about it is um, like making a bed. When you actually fold a sheet under, uh, under the mattress, when you actually put in the oakum in, it actually folds it into the seam, pinches it on either side, and that's what the actual crease does. When I talk about um, the crease of a corking iron, doing the job that he has to do for oakum. I'll do a little drawing to explain this more in more detail. 
this this is the actual imagine that's that's the plank okay and that's the actual seam of the plank the oak the oakum is actually pushed into here and when you use a corking iron the corking iron actually makes the oakum do that and th these these points here that's what the crease in the iron does it actually pinches that into the seam if you didn't do that it would just be straight across it would be like a springy mattress it just wouldn't do anything but to, actually that, that that effect is what happens and it's pinched in it, at those two points there part of the stage of uh, doing oakum is to feed it into the seam with this very thin almost sharp but not sharp corking iron uh, there's two ways you can do this I prefer this way where I'm feeding it in with my hands like that the reason I say I prefer this way is, is most of the time I'm working on old traditional boats and this planking isn't always that smooth so I feed it in and I get a nice constant loop you loop it in like that you can see how fine this seam is so I have to use quite fine oakum the other technique which is more commonly used on new planking is to actually literally use your iron and do that like that but it's each to their own and having done this process before I prefer this way so I just gradually go along like that loop it in for this purpose today I'm just going to do a couple of foot just so I can demonstrate the next part of the process so I'll stop about there like that and you can just pull that like that so you've got one seam all prepared for the next stage right next stage is to get the same iron place it in the seam and whack just go like that you'll notice the way I keep the iron always in the seam and the action I, I rock back go forward and tap just like that I rock back and go forward like that because it always stays in the seam that way you can get a rhythm and just keep on whacking it in if you stopped and went square there's a danger of actually missing the seam and going and hitting the plank. So, like that. The way you hold your manic, you, you, get, you get a nice feel or balance through it. So you can see I'm putting not, not much effort into it, it's just... And as I said before, she's been out of the water for several years, so she doesn't need to be whacked in that hard because she will swell up. The first iron is you use an iron with a crease in it, and it's the same same technique like that. Whack it in. There is another little tip you can use if you get a situation where the iron is like sticking in the seam, and that is to have just a tray. This, as you can see, is John West Harrington with a bit of linseed and you just dip the iron in the linseed and that stops the iron sticking, jamming and then you just go along like that right, the next part of the process of corking is to putty up the seam the first part to do is to burn what you end up with when the oakum to put in is uh, pieces of stock whiskey lot, like, bits of straw like oakum sticking out and that'll act like a wick to water so what you have to do is, is flash it off and that is you use a burner like that it's have it very low like that and you just go along the seam like that you see little sparks So you just do that over the seam, like that, that's all you have to do, turn it off. So having done that, 
You then prime the seam. Liberal coat and primer. Normally you'd leave this to dry for a while, but for today's purposes I'll just put some putty in. But you'd normally leave the primer to dry a bit. The next stage is to get some red lead putty. The lead's in the putty, only mainly because below the waterline you have lots of, uh, uh, sort of aquatic life that actually likes the linseed and putty. So you put red lead in it and it stops them eating the putty out of the seams. But you hold it in your hand like that, having worked it, well, normally I'd have a pair of gloves on, but I haven't got any today. You, you work the putty like that, take it to the seam, and you force it in. A nice good amount of pressure, just wipe it on the putty like that. In again, like that. Just go along. Work it away, like that. Downward motion, wiping it down again to keep the nice clean putty knife. You then go up like that. That's, I'll keep on wiping it to keep it clean. And then finally, one nice little. And there you have one completely finished seam.